part two, the fall of Rome. There have been many questions um, and about the fall of Rome, and many people have examined it because they look at Rome, and you can look at Rome as a similar to maybe our um, country, or maybe our world, the world today, and how Rome relates. Well, the fall of Rome um, was due to many causes, um, and all these causes coming together um, caused the catastrophe of the fall of Rome. First of all, some of the reasons, um, the, some people just thought Rome was just too big. They couldn't take care of everything. They couldn't take care of the lands clear in the north or the, par the parts of Africa that were really remote um, or the, the English or up in the northern Europe, the, the barbarians. They couldn't reach them. And when they did reach them, they couldn't protect them. And then during that time, they also had what was called the bubonic plague starting. And the plague was caused by rats that had these little fleas on the rats. And they didn't really know at that time about germs. But the plague started killing a lot of people in the cities. Then as time went on, Diocletian, we find, divided Rome. And they, a lot of people think when Rome was divided into the two parts, they couldn't really come together as a one, that that was a big downfall for the, the fall of Rome. Another thing people see is the Colosseums and the games. People went in to entertain themselves more. They wanted to entertain themselves more um, than than anything else and every day they thought oh let's go we, we'll go watch the, the games the Colosseums which was very violent uh, in fact many many people died in the rings of the circuses and the Colosseums in Rome and much money went into to putting it all together and then the Senate became very corrupted and they had senators that were actually bribing each other and bribing to get bribing to get the, the new Caesar in. And also the persecution of Christians. More Christians um, were killed and they had to hide out in the catacombs. Hmm, that might be a, a major cause. Why Rome fell, we don't really know. Uh, but all these things that came together the emperors we found, as we saw last, were very unstable, and numerous of them were assassinated and betrayed by their own guards, and many were just crazy. <laughs> and they was, there was also the battle of control going on with the Caesars at all, almost all times. Then there were the barbarians. Let's say something about the barbarians. A lot of them were coming to the Lord. and and But a lot of them also came into Rome. Um for protection from other barbarians, and they ended up getting persecuted too. And a lot of times, um, a barbarian would put puppet leaders um, on the, the throne, so to say, of Caesars, and rule. the barbarians were actually ruling through the Caesars, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Um, there was a lot of corruption, and there was a lot of greed, as I said before, and the people distrusted the government. And there weren't their standards. They had very unfair laws and unjust laws. And their standards um, were whatever, whatever. Kind of like today. It's like they didn't have moral standards at all. They didn't, they didn't follow the Ten Commandments. And they just did whatever they thought. Everything was irrelevant at that time. Hmm. And also the people flocked to the cities. And the cities became crowded, and terrible disease spread in the cities. And then the taxes, they raised the taxes um, so high that only the rich, the rich didn't pay taxes, and the poor couldn't pay taxes. So the middle class plundered down to poverty stages in some areas. Defending this very large country was pretty expensive. And they hired barbarians to protect them that really had no allegiance to Rome at all. In fact, they paid barbarians off. 
and the west and the e east was, were no longer united. The Byzantine Empire called themselves Romans, but they had a whole different system. Um, I have to say something about the Byzantine Empire is that they did preserve the gospel there and the Bible. Um, it's, and we'll be going into that and talking about the, the Byzantine emperors. Um, then we have, of course, you know, I went over the Goths and the Visigoths and the Vandals. Hmm. In the midst of all that, we have all, all, all of the barbarians attacking at once. Um, another thing is their currency. They uh, printed, they printed more money and it had lots of inflation which meant that their money wasn't worth anything. And um, they had slavery, and they abused the abuse of slavery and sexual immorality, and divorce was rampant. And the family, the family, they didn't really have families then that were sticking together anymore. And immigration, tons of refugees pouring in, they couldn't, couldn't handle all of that at all. Um... It was just a time of the wealthy looking to um, be entertained, materialism, gluttony, they would throw up um, and then eat again, really crazy. And there was a time maybe God said I had to stop all of this. As I told before, as I told you before, I believe what Augustine said, all of these things result from sin. And as the sin went rampant, so did the downfall of Rome. And that's how I want to end it here with all, and to end it with the same, that what, the same thing that Augustine wrote, the city of God is not of this world. And so when we look at Rome, we can relate it to the world today, can't we? You can turn on the TV and see a lot of these things happening, just like they happened in Rome. Maybe mankind will fall again. But the thing is, when you know the Lord, and you know the Word of God, you know that we have great hope. And in this world, we're going to have tribulation. But we can be of good cheer because Jesus has overcome this world. So we can live as overcomers. And more than that, we're commissioned with the gospel of Jesus Christ to share in a lost world that has all these same problems as Rome had and to give them hope in eternity. Many of these people, they were seeking just things of this world. But when we look, the world to come is eternity. So as we point people to eternity today, we can relate to what things are like in Rome. Yes. And we could show them the depravity of mankind. But also, there's a remedy. And the remedy is the, in the redemption of Jesus Christ, that he came to redeem us. What does that mean? That he came to pay our death penalty. That he came to buy us back <laughs> and to give us the hope of glory. That we can look to him in everything and have hope. So don't give up about the history of Rome and the future of the world. It's not grim at all. God is a God of grace and mercy and most of all love.